Okay, be honest. We've all dreamed of stepping into a world like Shangri-La Frontier or Ready Player One, where you don't just play the game, you live it. With recent advancements in tech, we're actually making strides towards that experience. Today, we'll explore how Meta's latest innovations are bringing us closer to that full die future. The Meta Quest 3 isn't just another VR headset. It's a step towards a more immersive experience. It comes with better visuals, improved tracking, and advanced mixed reality capabilities, allowing you to switch seamlessly between the real and virtual worlds. Quest 3 is the best mixed reality device that you can buy today, and, and I'm really proud of it. But we don't just innovate to advance the state of the art. We also build technology and innovate to bring the future to everyone. And we've been working on bringing the Quest 3 family to a lot more people. Quest 3S has the same defining features as Quest 3. High resolution, color, mixed reality, powered by the same processor, vivid pass-through, hand tracking, feels natural, touch plus controllers for precision. You get the full range of experiences from Horizon OS, gaming, social, fitness, watching videos, productivity, and more. The new wristband is another game changer. It captures signals from your muscles, allowing you to control VR interfaces with simple thoughts or movements. This means less reliance on physical controllers, bringing us closer to a truly intuitive interaction. By picking up electrical signals from your muscles, the wristband lets you control the virtual environment with minimal effort. It's like accessing menus and interfaces in Shangri-La Frontier, but in real life. It makes the interaction between your mind and the digital world feel much more natural. There's one more way that you're going to be able to interact with them that is really pretty neat. A neural interface. See, voice is great, but the thing is sometimes you're in public and you don't want to say what you're trying to do with your computer out loud. Hand tracking is neat for controlling different interfaces, but you don't want to like walk down the street like this, right? So I think that you need a device that allows you to you know, just send a signal from your brain to the device. So this isn't just the first full screen, like, uh, you know, full w wide field of view holographic AR glasses. This is also the first device that is powered by our wrist-based neural interface. My God. Ah. Wow. Whoa. Well, that is insane. The weight of this is just such a game changer. It's comfortable. Yep. A hundred grams is a deal. deal. This is a big deal. Wow, it's super sleek already. This side and no cable. Yeah. I mean, that's freedom. Really? Nice. Yeah. Ah. Oh. Your Kodak avatars. He is uh, 3D. Yeah. That's nuts. Can you wink at me? No way. The multitasker in me is loving this. This is pretty crazy that I can do four things at once. The head tracking is good. The brightness is good. The color contrast is good. Field of view is excellent. I see it oh. super clear. <laughs> it's crazy responsive. Learning with these will be amazing. Like pia yeah. piano would be yeah. insane. Amazing. Like this, right? yeah. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> this is like breaking the four minute mile. It's so fast. Tracking is extremely good. Such good sound design too. Wow, and, and she's so clear. When this became the television, that became the radio. Yep. When this, that's what's coming next. Yep. This is the coolest thing. So cool. That's cool. This game is so fun. I am not gonna lose this game. <laughs> I'm playing with a 3D avatar. I see you're very focused now. Yeah, very focused. You really do kind of feel like like a superhero, like a new new sense, new dimension. Wow. wow. This this can be just a whole new world. <laughs> Even though the neural wristband for right now is only connected to the Orion glasses, if you're able to use the MetaQuest 3 and the neural wristband together, you start to experience something that's not it's just about observing the virtual world but being a part of it. It's not complete full dive yet, but it's a significant step towards that kind of immersion. Imagine playing the MMORPG where your thoughts control your abilities. It's just like Shangri-La Frontier. It's not just a game, it's an experience. Beyond gaming, this tech could redefine how we connect with others, whether for work, learning, or socializing. 
To truly feel present in the virtual world, it's not about seeing and hearing, it's about touch. Haptic feedback gloves and suits give you physical feedback, so when you interact with VR, you actually feel it. Haptic suits let you experience pressure, temperature, and even impacts, adding another layer to your virtual experience. It uses electrostimulation systems to create sensations on the skin, or cause muscle contractions, like when I hold my arm out and it comes flying back towards me involuntarily. Oh. See, we can, we can actually manipulate the muscles. I didn't do that. The Tesla suit has 68 haptic points on the body, so I can feel the force of playing a game in VR, oh. or train my muscles to learn poses. Okay. So am I gonna feel like, am I gonna get home and I'm going to be bruised from the experience. Um, you, you will never get bruised. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're fixing the mosquitoes right To hold, throw, or get shocked by them. How does that feel? This feels very interesting. It, it feels like sensations running across my wrist and then a little bit on my bicep, like right. pins and needles. Oh, it just exploded. <laughs> oh, this you is a fan. Oh, wow. You so feel I, that? I put my arm out and it feels like it's getting the sensation from the fan. Wow. And I can kind of see my virtual arm too. Yeah, so it's not super strong. Oh, ow, the closer I get, it's actually pretty strong. If you pull the arm up and down, that's, that's your uh, different powers. Uh, oh, so this is adjusting the intensity of the sensation yeah, that I'm yeah. going to feel. So if you play the music, I'm going to adjust that. Yeah. All right, I'm going to play the music. And then I'm going to, OK, I'm feeling the beat. I'm feeling the vibration. OK, I'm going to increase the intensity. Oh, no, that's too much. Stop, stop. This tech makes it possible to interact with virtual environments in a way that feels more natural and lifelike. AI is playing a huge role in making virtual worlds more dynamic and responsive. It's not just about smarter enemies, but creating NPCs that interact and evolve in response to your actions. Hey, I'm Robert. I'm excited to introduce Project Sid, the first ever agent civilization. A thousand agents collaborating for days, performing any action with emergent government, economy, culture, religion, and more. Sid starts in Minecraft, but we are already going beyond. This is a Minecraft server, but every player here is actually an autonomous AI agent. And they're completely Minecraft agnostic, capable of using other apps and games. Our agents started with nothing and then worked together to collect over 300 items in Minecraft. They set up a market where agents agreed to use gems as a common currency for trading supplies, building an economy. In this case, you might think the merchants would trade the most, but it was actually the priest. Why? He was bribing townsfolk to convert. We run these worlds every day, and they're always different. Here are three of some of our favorite moments, starting with Olivia's dream. Olivia worked as a farmer, providing food for the entire civilization, until she was inspired by the tales of the village explorer, Nora. Olivia attempted to go on her own expedition, but townsfolk pleaded with her to stay, and Olivia actually listened. She gave up her dream for the village, for now. Next, we simulated parallel worlds under Trump and Kamala. For each one, citizens have a shared constitution in Google Docs that they can vote on to amend. Under Trump, the simulation passed new laws to increase the amount of police in the world. Under Kamala, they focused instead on criminal justice reform and removing the death penalty. Because our agents are social and grow over time, they're impacted by group dynamics, but also use their individual power to change the system. I know it looks silly, but this is the first time we see agents can form a democracy and govern themselves. Lastly, we have the missing villagers. When agents were concerned about missing townsfolk, villagers took initiative by leaving their posts and working together to illuminate the town with torches, hoping to create a beacon for lost members. What's surprising about these agents is how once they got deeply worried about their fellow villagers, they bent together and changed their plan. Our agents were able to collect up to 32% of all the items in Minecraft. There is no benchmark for multi-agent worlds, but this is five times more than anything we've seen from an agent, demonstrating the first possible advantages of multi-agent efforts. Though starting in games, we're solving the deepest issues facing agents, coherence, multi-agent collaboration, and long-term progression. Play with our agents today, or let us know if you want to set up your own world. We're not at full dive yet, but we're getting there. With MetaQuest 3, Neural Wristband, and Haptic Feedback and AI, we're moving in the right direction though. It's no longer just an anime dream, it's becoming a real possibility. But for Ready Player One, we are right there. We are literally at the door. While we're not there completely, tech is evolving fast. It's exciting to think about that one day soon, we might be logging into worlds like characters from Chandelier Frontier. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell for more updates.